sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. I've shared these before, but I thought we'd do a little refresh. Okay, so number one is feminist. <laughs> Two, social justice voter. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the desert. Welcome back to another episode of Women Dating After Divorce. And what better way to start it, guys, than with a woman's 26 relationship non-negotiables. Now, 26, this woman is being too modest right here. I think that any woman who knows her worth should have at least 50. But again, this woman is just, she's in it for love, all right? So let's have a look at her 26 non-negotiables and let's see, guys, what does it take to cash in on this prize. I've shared these before, but I thought we'd do a little refresh. Okay, so number one is feminist. Two, social justice voter. This is not... <laughs> now, I will go to say that th no man exists who is a feminist and a social justice voter. Uh, but then again, just a couple of days ago, we covered a dude who was a feminist and a social justice voter. So, hey... Uh, I mean, then again, he's not really a man uh, in the full sense of the word, meaning he lacks uh, any sort of testosterone and irrational thinking. But hey, he happens to have XY chromosomes. So I guess he is winning for now. Let's continue. Not necessarily political as much as like this person values the lives of others and will vote to protect people. Being that that's what my entire life revolves around, it's super important to me. In other words, a uh, social justice voter and caring about people is voting for everything that benefits her because that is what caring for her means. Now, regardless if these laws are moral or immoral or unethical or, you know, just plain stupid, if you want to care about people, you have to agree with everything that she agrees with and with the feminist agenda. Three is influenceable. Your partner is able to accept influence from you. They are willing to hear feedback, to grow, to be flexible. Four. Yeah, no, in other words, I want to manipulate him uh, and he has to, you know, live under my, my possession and my dictatorship. In other words, this is what she means. Four is inclusive religious or spiritual beliefs or lack thereof. So I don't really mind what someone believes as long as they are open and loving and understanding of where I'm coming from and where other people are coming from as well. Number five is health conscious. This is kind of triggering for some folks because it can be a dog whistle for fat phobia. But for every single item on this list, I have a negative experience. For this item in particular was from a relationship where my partner was in physically very poor health and was refusing to take care of themselves by going to the doctor or following medical advice and it was very distressing so i need to be with someone who wants to take care of their body not from a size perspective but from a health and body perspective Number i love how these uh what, what is it body acceptance people they they yap about yeah body acceptance yet they will never date an overweight person never ever if they are given the choice to date the guy with a six pack who is extremely fit and some overweight 200 pound dude who is balding at age 20 uh, guess who they go for number six outdoorsy i love to camp your girl loves to go camping so i need someone who wants to do that with me but then seven is can also veg so if you don't know what that means it's like we can chill outside and be active, but then also we can stay in bed for 10 hours and watch a movie marathon. Eight is once kids. Nine is likes to travel. And 10, shared financial expectation. 11, proud of me. 12, affectionate in public and private. 13 is intelligent. This doesn't have to be like traditional, standardized, measured intelligence, but they can teach me about some things. 
14 is empathetic, 15 is kind, 16 is protective, 17 is sexually attractive to me, 18 is shared sexual expectations. And there goes the body acceptance, guys. <laughs> they are body ac uh, accepting a lot, uh, but it, when it comes to S3 actual attractiveness, they will never feel it towards any overweight person. Now, let me tell you, a lot of men fulfill all of these things, except the first two, of course, being a feminist. A lot of men are intelligent, empathetic, kind, protective. I mean, most men are. The thing is, the thing with these non-negotiables, guys, is that they always uh, fluctuate. You know, they, they always change depending on how attractive you are. If you are really attractive, most of these will walk out the door. If you're not attractive, uh, they will get upgraded by a hundred. So, you know, it becomes impossible to meet this criteria expectations which basically just means i want to be kind of on the same page with my partner about frequency or exploration not even as that's really convenient isn't it like most of the things she's mentioning uh are regarding her now I've, I've had this experience i want the next guy to be like this and like this and like this other thing and i want him to have the same s3 actual expectations and the same political beliefs and the same uh, views about uh, life. She even mentioned at one point, I really like to go out, but I also like to stay at home for 10 hours. So which one is it? The one you decide at the moment. And your partner has to lack any sort of uh, decision making and just go, you know, go with you. Whatever you want to do, Queen. This is what she wants. A slave, in other words. A person uh, with no opinion, with no character, no personality. This is why one of the first things was uh, that he has to be easily manipulated. So yeah, just picture the reverse. P picture a man and his non-negotiable is, oh yeah, m my partner has to have S3X with me whenever I want, whatever I want to do, uh, you know, whatever I want to try, uh, she has to accept. And th this is just bullcrap necessarily on the same page but in the same book 19 is considerate thoughtful and 20 is shared sense of humor 21 is weird i don't know how the shared sense of humor would work given that you have no sense of humor but we'll see about that this is different from sense of humor something's got to be a little off 22 is reliable 23 fondness and admiration those things are along with influenceable a part of the gottman's research in the top three indicators of the most successful relationships 24 is appreciation of creativity they don't have to be creative themselves potentially but a, an appreciation because that's such a big part of who i am it helps someone understand me i think 25 is confidence self-assuredness you don't have to be like the loudest person in the room but to have the confidence internally and 26 somewhat balanced between spontaneous and stable okay that's I just love these uh, standards that don't really mean anything. What does it mean to be, what was it, stable, but at the same time spontaneous or something like this? Yeah, stable and spontaneous. Now, how do you mix in those? Uh, how do you mixing those benefit her? You know, because she really wants you to be stable when she wants you to be stable, but spontaneous when she ex wants you to be spontaneous. Uh, which defeats the whole purpose of being spontaneous because if you are spontaneous when she doesn't want it oh we have a problem so again it's just all of this is nonsense all of this is impossible to meet it it's impossible no person on planet earth male or female fulfills this criteria maybe in the first place because these criteria uh, do don't exist on themselves don't make sense you know that there's no continuity between them it, it basically guys i can summarize all these 26 non-negotiables into one and it is you have to do whatever i want you to that's the end goal balance between spontaneous and stable okay that's it what do y'all think i think you're full of crap let's continue guys Y'all, I could write a book on what to expect when you go through a divorce. But honestly, one of the best things that came out of um, everything that I went through during my divorce is that I learned to be self-dependent and I also learned that dating right after divorce is like going to the grocery store starving hungry 
Seriously, I think there should be a book called like what to expect when you go through divorce. Kind of like what to expect when you're expecting. But seriously, somebody should warn you about that first initial relationship. After my divorce, the next relationship that I went to, I was desperate. But let me explain desperate. The type of desperate that I was feeling during that time was a desperate need for somebody to value me. Somebody to nurture, protect, and love me. Maybe I was naive or whatever, but that first initial relationship um, after my divorce seemed to offer all that. I'm an action girl. Like, your words don't mean a lot to me. Your actions, they mean everything. And so I wasn't just like letting this guy promise me the world. Like literally he was putting his words into action compared to what I was getting before. But it wasn't long until like the true colors revealed themselves and the jealousy took over and then the inconsistency and all of the things that we all hate about certain relationships. And at first I wanted Wow, surprise, surprise. It turns out this man wasn't perfect. Now call me shocked. These women, guys, I'll never understand it. They leave marriages uh, because the marriages are not perfect and they don't feel well in it. And then they go, they have these funny nights with Char, they have, uh, you know, the butterflies. And then it takes them a couple of weeks to find out that this other person also has flaws. You also don't agree about everything. There are also problems in the way. And they are shocked because their expectation was, oh, my husband... He has to be the worst in the planet. I need to upgrade him. I need to find someone better. And they are shocked when they learn that every person on earth has his flaws and you can't have a relationship without any problems in it. You know, it's, it just shows, again, yet another woman that ruins her marriage and ruins her relationship uh, by just not knowing how to handle problems. A lot of people um, sympathize with these women. Oh, if she divorced him, well, it just goes to show how bad the man was. No, not really. In most of the cases, the reason for divorce are as, as dumb and mundane as they can get, right? It's just a problem that you could solve in a few conversationship. Uh, excuse me, damn, conversationships. Guys, I'm going insane with these situationships. <laughs> no, some conversations, right? Uh, but these women, guys, they, they just expect everything to be perfect. And this is why they, they end up single forever. Because they expect uh, the fairy tale treatment. Well, we don't live in Disneyland, madam. I wanted to be mad about it. But honestly, it did me a favor because I kept trying, like, working my ass off to make this relationship work. I was determined that that spark, that flame, that chemistry that I felt for that person initially was, is still there. Isn't it sad how women only try when they feel a spark? So if there is no spark, out of the way. I'm, I'm signing the divorce papers, go F yourself. But if there is spark, oh, I'm going to try my hardest. To, I'll fight to the bitter end. I'll die on this hill. This is my last... Uh, you know, I'll attempt everything, guys. My last resort. You base all of your decision-making on simply emotions, and ne not emotions that you necessarily understand. Uh, can you define what the spark is? Where does it come from? Uh, where does it lead? What originates it? It's nonsense, man. I cannot believe. Feelings are an important pa part of our nature. It's what makes us humans. Uh, but when you base all your decision-making and all your future plans on just some feelings you can't even understand, you are incredibly unintelligent. But the more the relationship seemed to crumble, the more self-sufficient I became. And the effort that I was spending working on this relationship, I started spending on myself. But honestly, it made me a better person because now... I'm not desperate for anything. Like, the yeah, yeah, next sure. person that I allow into my life, they got to bring something to the table. Because I don't really have a need for anything, but I want companionship.
So you have a need for companionship, you know, in other words. Well, guys, look, here's what I think, and I'll end on this uh, thought. Sorry, guys, the, the image is glitching for some reason, I don't know. But uh, from what I've noticed, uh, a lot of men who are in marriages, uh, they need to do more in, in the sense of paying attention to detail and doing little things for their wives, because women are just like this, you know, they... They, they want the attention to detail, they want the little presents, they want for the relationship to feel magical and all that. And men don't have that need, men just feel fulfilled uh, if the relationship is well and stable and there's loyalty and friendship. But women require a little more. And there's no problem with that when it's in, in healthy doses, you know. I, I somehow think that it's good for women to, you know, sort of keep pushing the guys to... Uh, act a little more romantic even 30 years into the relationship but then there, there are these women guys that just take it to an extreme that not even the men who don't pay five minutes of attention to their woman reach it's this extreme level of i want the relationship to be at the top of at the, at the zenith of uh, emotions all the time every day every day I, I want it to be special and magical and outstanding and whimsical every single day and you can't have that it's literally impossible, you know, and these women find it over and over and over again. They divorce their husband because the spark is gone. Then they go with the dude and they see uh, and they say, oh, see, everything is perfect. I'm feeding the butterflies. Everything is all right. And it takes only a couple of weeks to realize that this other person is not the, you know, unreal expectation that you had of him. And he's just a normal person that cannot grant you with your wish of everything being like a Disney story all the time. And then they leave him and they go for another one. And there's some chads in the way that give them the magical nights. And they think that he is the one, but he leaves. And he's not the one. He cannot grant them that. Nobody can, guys. These chads, if these women stick around with Chad, they'll just find out it's not really that exciting all the time. You know? These women show that they're just addicted to anxiety. Uh, no, I'm not saying that marriage should be this thing that is exciting the first year and then it turns into the most uh, dull and uninteresting thing. No, but you can't expect it to be a roller coaster of emotions every single day, damn it. it it's so tiresome for men uh, to have this expectation on us that uh, we have to be like superheroes every day of our lives. We have to be in an action, romantic, thriller, drama movie every day of our lives. Bro, just let me live in peace, you know? But guys, what are your thoughts? Leave them down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.